Hello and welcome to Emmanuel Church Rio Rico's online virtual worship for January 28th, 2024. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you grateful for your enormous love, your mercy, your grace to us. And Lord, the way that you have provided for our needs repeatedly over and over again. Lord, we lift up those who are in dangerous, bad, or painful situations, those whose lives have been upended by war, those whose uh, health is imperiled by illness or accident, those whose livelihoods have been lost as they seek new ways of making a living, Lord, those who, those who need you because they are living without you. Help us, Lord, to be your hands and your voices and your feet and your face to those who need you the most. As we pray in your precious and holy name, Lord Christ, amen. Uh, we're continuing our look at the gospel according to Luke and I want to take a look at chapter 13, where we started last week, where we see a story of Jesus healing someone. And I can't help but think that the reaction to it is caused by the synagogue leaders' uh, focus on the wrong rules, uh, on the things that maybe are not really applicable in the situation. And so I'm calling this whose rules, to whom uh, to whose rules is our obedience to be given? To man's or to God's? It's an important question and one we still need to ask and answer. To begin with, Jesus responds to the need. This is something Jesus always does. In chapter 13, verse 10, we read, On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues. Now, I'll say that this is the first time we've read about Jesus teaching in a synagogue in several chapters. It was back, I think, in chapter 9 was the last time that we read about him teaching in a synagogue. All his other teachings we just read were outside and a little more extemporaneous. Uh, this is also the last time that Luke records Jesus teaching in a synagogue before he goes to Jerusalem. So, there's some significant things we should see here. We do not see what he was intending to teach originally, but we see the very important things that he does teach. So, Jesus is teaching in the synagogue. This is something that any uh, adult male Jew could do. Uh, and a woman who had been crippled by a spirit, uh, and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. Now, remember, Luke is a physician. So when he says she'd been crippled by a spirit, he's at least making it clear to us that it was not some sort of accident where she was crippled in the accident. It is not, um, not anything else. It is something interior, something that has crippled her. This might be some form of muscular or skeletal paralysis. I have seen people, uh, and in fact, they were mostly women whom this has happened to. They were bent over like she is, and they can't straighten up. There's, it's not a unwillingness to do it. It's the inability to do so. And so going on, she was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Now understand, this is not Jesus ser uh, serving as some sort of a chiropractor where he makes an adjustment to her spine or something like that. This is a true healing. If she had been bent over for 18 years... Even if, for some inexplicable reason, she had been doing it purposely. The fact is that her spine 
would have been stuck like this. The muscles in her back would have atrophied so that she would never be able to stand up. And yet what Jesus does here is make her how she should have been. So she, he is driving out this spirit of infirmity, this, this spirit that has crippled her for almost two decades. And he leaves her in perfect health, able to stand up completely. And when she does so, she begins to praise God. I have no doubt that because of the way she had been bent over and, and she would have to probably walk with the help of one or maybe even two sticks just to get around, then she, she probably would have some trouble speaking because she would never be able to take deep breaths, breathing, doing anything. Her life would have been simply miserable. Oh, today there might have been some kind of surgery that could have helped her. But in Jesus' day, there was nothing that could be done for her short of a miracle. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He sees the need and he calls her forward. She doesn't approach him on her own. He calls her to him. Now, in the 21st century, this doesn't seem like a, a big deal. But in the first century, it would be a very big deal. This is a woman who was not his mother, who was not his sister, who was not his wife. This is a woman that he does not know. And he calls her to him because he sees her need. Jesus looks at us and sees what we need the most. Do you realize that? He knows it. Oh, we might try and pretend it's something else. We might tell other people, oh, what we need is really this. This is what we're, we're lacking. This is where we need him. But no, Jesus sees past that, and he recognizes our need, and he approaches us and frees us from our greatest need, which may not be what we think it is, but is always what he knows it to be. Now what Jesus meets at this point, here's this woman praising God because of what happened, but instead he meets conformity instead of faith. Verse 14, indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leader said to the people, there are six days to work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. Luke 13, 14. Now, we are not going to argue about whether that's right or not. Um, yes, there are six other days where the woman could have come to be healed, but Jesus wasn't there on those other six days. He was there that day. And it is far more important that we respond in faith to Jesus than that we, reform, that we uh, respond in conformity to what others expect us to do. You see, there are, there are times that truly following God, doing his will, being God's men or women where we are, might go against what other people expect of us. It might go against the rules that people have made up for themselves and especially for others. Now, the synagogue leader should have been a man knowing the scripture, knowing the Bible, knowing who God was, he should have given praise to God for the miracle that he saw. A woman who had been lame for 18 years suddenly straightens up completely unnaturally because naturally there was no way for her to stand up and begins to praise God for what happened. This is a reason to praise God. Anybody should give praise to God, and the synagogue leader especially 
should have given praise to God for what had happened instead of criticizing Jesus for when it happened. Going on, it's because Jesus comes to bring freedom, not bondage. The Lord answered him, You hypocrites! Don't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Now you see, this was this was actually a kind of work. And yes, it was. Uh, it's mentioned in the Mishnah that uh, it is quite acceptable on the Sabbath to let your ox or donkey out of the stall so that it can get water. That is not considered inappropriate labor on the Sabbath when we are to rest from all labor. And he says, you do this, then going on verse 16, then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day? From what bound her? When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he had done. What Jesus is saying is that it was far more important that this woman be freed from the bondage of her infirmity, from the, the chains that she was... Uh, figuratively in on the Sabbath, a day for worshiping God, a day for praising God, a day for honoring God, and that it honored God far more for her to be freed from this bondage than it would have to say, no, I'm sorry, woman, you can't be healed on the Sabbath. You'll have to come back another day. That is, that is not what Jesus came to do. He knew his time was limited. He knew his day was coming. And he knew he had to do what he could to announce the coming of the kingdom of God. And part of the kingdom of God is wholeness for those who are not whole. And that includes healing this woman, even on the Sabbath. And Jesus doesn't mince words. He calls them hypocrites because they do exactly what they're accusing him of doing. They work on the Sabbath if it's what they think they ought to do. What is it that we keep God from doing in our lives? Because we've imposed boundaries, rules, restrictions on ourselves, or perhaps others have, that keep us from being the people God wants us to be. What is it that our traditions, our habits, our, our long-held ways of doing things that have very little, if anything, to do what God has told us in the Scripture, what is it? that is holding us back from being the, the lights of the world, the salt of the earth? What is it keeping us from being who God intends us to be? How are we binding ourselves, holding ourselves back, instead of being freed by the grace of Jesus Christ? We need to look for it. And we need to throw it off. We've got to throw off the chains that we have left on ourselves or we have forged for ourselves. I can't help but think of um, the, a Christmas carol where uh, Ebenezer Scrooge's partner, Marley, long dead, shows up and he explains that the chains that he is wearing are chains that he forged link by link every day of his life. Too often the chains that hold us are the chains we have made for ourselves. We must not do so. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, free us and help us to free others. Give us 
the grace to reach out to those who are bound and to help them free themselves by your grace. This we pray in your precious and holy name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Go in peace and may God bless you.